So I'm going to tell you this, that I had an experience um, and it was a negative one with a psychic once. And I went um, to them and um, it, they did the reading, but in the reading, they said they were going to do all these horrible things to me and they were going to chop me up and they were going to put me in a bag and throw me in the sea. And so I checked the person's card. It turns out I hadn't gone to a psychic. I had gone to a psycho. <laughs> so you have to, you have to be careful. So I wasn't expecting. Welcome to Books in Hindsight, the only podcast where hindsight is always twenty twenty. And we explore the great books, works, and ideas of the century. Now, here's your host, teacher, and author, Matthew Hines. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a special Books in Hindsight and Encounters USA program. Now, if you've been watching Books in Hindsight for the past few weeks, we've really had some amazing guests, and today is certainly no different. We are reaching out across the pond, and we are going to be talking with author, psychic, and alien abductee Soma Ara. Now, Soma Ara is coming to us from Plymouth, England. And for you, those of you who don't know much about the jolly old UK, um, she is actually English. And so the first thing I want to do is I want to introduce Soma Ara to our Books in Hindsight and Encounters USA crowd. So welcome, Soma Ara. Hi, Matthew. I'm delighted to be here. And um, like Portsmouth, not Plymouth. Oh, I'm sorry. When I talked to you before, I thought you said Plymouth. And, you know, you must think I'm a complete idiot because I kept I went on to no. this big, long thing about the pilgrims leaving from Plymouth. So you're No, probably- that's fine. You're actually not the first person who's done that. There's been a few people that have done that. Yeah. And all of them Americans, I'm sure. No, some English people as well. OK, well, one thing that we don't do on the show is we don't argue with me. So that's the, that's the first thing I have to point out. All right. So I'm just kidding. You can argue all you want. So um, a couple of things I wanted to ask you about being English. And the first thing is, is what do you call a woman who drives a truck in England? A truck driver? <laughs> nope. Lori. <laughs> oh. Lori? Okay. Lori, yeah. Okay, so then there's uh, another question I have for you. And what do you call a male bathroom attendant that works only in males' uh, bathrooms in England? I don't know. Not even a guess? Um, A male cleaner? How about Lou? (laughs) Lou? Okay, so I'm sure everybody over in jolly old England is rolling on the floor right now or or maybe <laughs> rolling to turn that dial. So anyway, all right, well, we are going to have a really interesting podcast if anybody's left to listen to it. But um, right now, I want to find out a little bit more about Soma Ara. So let's start out with the psychic angle and work our way into the author angle. So where does Soma Ara become Soma Ara and start doing psychic readings and whatnot? Well, that, that's an interesting question. It all started for me when I was a child. Um, my granddad passed away when I was nine and came back to me a couple of weeks later, as solid as anything. And I mean, I really saw him physically, very physically. And I'm sure if I'd reached out and and touched him, I would have felt his skin and and flesh and bone because he was so solid to me. And he gave me a message from my mom that I passed on to her. Um, But I grew up with spirit. I I grew up with spirit and um, my guides. And I, I had a very unusual childhood and I had a lot of trauma. 
And it was through the traumatic experiences that spirit stepped in. So on one hand, it was horrendous, but on the other hand, it was beautiful. It was kind of cathartic, really, because I had um, spiritual experiences because of the negative experiences. So I grew up with spirit and um, always aware of spirit, always had the, the, I don't know if you want to call it a gift, but always had the mediumship abilities Mm -hmm. from a very young age. And it was that really that got me through the the trauma. Mm -hmm. All right. Now I'm, you know, I'm sitting here and I'm listening to you and I'm looking at you. And I think that the first thing I have to do before we continue on is, do you have any ID? Are you old enough to be on this show? (laughs) You look like you're like, uh, you're what? I'm 47. That is no way. I was thinking, I I was thinking maybe subtract about 30 years. Okay. Well, um, I I guess we have to take your word for it because all you're going to do is bring up a fake ID. But um, I've, you know, I've seen you before. And if anybody knows what a cherubim is, well, you certainly have that kind of face. And so uh, if you want to look in the Bible for cherubim, well, I think you're looking at one right now. So let's continue on. You've talked about you had negative experiences as a child, and that led to your psychic abilities. And if you're a psychologist, you're going to say, well, those are just, uh, those are coping. Those are coping things. So um, it is, is a traumatic experience are things that happen in a childhood that are, are not really, you know, conducive to childhood. Are those things that kind of can trigger psychic abilities? Yeah, Matthew, because what happens um, is that when, so when a a child has traumatic experiences, and mine were mostly sexual abuse, um, they, it's the, there's an excess of DMT released in the brain, um, which is a chemical that causes psychic um, abilities and awareness. So because it shocks the body, it shocks the mind and it opens it up like um, um, it it opens up like a vortex or a different world um, or a door to a different world. So and and that's through that's caused by DMT and excess of DMT in the brain, which is released through trauma. So that's kind of the the. You know, it's a chemical. It's not any woo-woo stuff. It comes down to chemicals okay. in the brain being released. But is is DMT like? Is that like dopamine? Is that a is that an accepted chemical in the world of science? I'm not sure what DMT actually stands for. Mm-hmm. Well, I've seen it associated with um, the. I, I don't know what they call it the the pine cone looking part of your brain. Or something that 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 shows up in you know the carvings from Assyria and Iraq and and uh, the Anunnaki is is that the DMT that you're you're talking about and that exactly yeah. okay okay so uh, but that's not something that is accepted by science we we don't know right no I think that's proven I think I'm pretty okay. sure that's scientific proven um, facts. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So right now you're talking about you had experiences that basically were not good, but they opened up a certain part of your mind and um, they gave you psychic abilities. So how, how does that work when you're telling your parents, well, I, I just saw grandpa, you know, what, the, what do your parents say? Well, I gave my mum the message the next day, and it was he, the message was things like she had to go to the doctors on the Wednesday. She was signing divorce papers on Thursday. She mm. had this condition and that condition, and it was so accurate down to fine details that the blood from her face just drained. She went pure white, and I'll never forget that um, because it had such a profound experience on her. Mm-hmm. And you were how old? Seven? I was nine. Nine? Okay. So you're right. Um, you're right in the You're just enter, almost entering puberty, right? 
And is that when you entered puberty, is that when things really started to open up for you? No, I, I, I was, I, I have done things different, kind of back to front. Most people come in in a very physical way and then gradually open up to spirit or research things and start getting into the spiritual stuff. But I came in back to front. I came in um, very spiritual and, and kind of wide awake to, to spirit and guides and fairies and nature spirits and Pleiadians and all kinds of things. And my struggle actually has been to, to be here in the physical and be grounded and be, um, that, that's been my struggle has been to be grounded, to, to ground in the spiritual into the physical. Mm-hmm. Um, because for, for most of my childhood, if not all of my childhood, I was out of my body. And I've had, that has been what, one of my li- biggest life lessons is to ground that spiritual energy and, and ground it into my body and be here physically in the physical um, presence. Because what, what happens when you're, when you are abused or traumatized as a child, you, you leave your body. And for me, I was connecting with the Pleiadians, but this, the, the psychologists call it disassociation. Or you okay. disassociate. That, that, that would be the um, psychologist term. But yeah. the spiritual term is being ungrounded, but it's the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think yeah, I was trying to. I think I said uh, compen- compensating the way you compensate, um, but I was trying to get into into what you just said. Okay, so there's an element of people that have like P- P- PTSD, and they say that people who have PTSD, post traumatic stress syndrome, the common element is traumatic is not trauma from battle, but it started with trauma from childhood. So. Um, you are starting out with basically PTSD, you're disassociating. And so, I mean, let's just, let's just stop for one second here and just explain to people that are listening that the reason that uh, Soma Ara is on Encounters USA and Books in Hindsight is that she's been abducted, had real physical abductions by aliens. So she's also here because she's written two books, and we're going to talk about them in a little bit. But she has had real physical experiences and her, you know, ability to write. And I know people are very, especially on Encounters USA, are very skeptical about, oh, psychic this and psychic that. But Carol's success as a psychic, I I mean, I'm not going to try to endorse anything or or try to... uh, to say a belief system, but the proof is always in the pudding. And Carol is very well respected as a psychic. So from what I see and what I, we have to go on, um, what Carol says, basically, we, we have to accept and take at face value because the, you know, the proof is there that she's had a lot of success and she's helped a lot of people out. So um, we want to get into your books, but I really want to find out about um or before we close this off, I want to know you're a child or or you're getting into your adolescence as a psychic, um, but you're really living in, in a, in a world that doesn't even exist. Right. Um, what do you mean? Well, you're doing all these compensation strategies and you've got the DMT going, you're talking, you know, to Pleiadians and whatever, but you go down to the public school, I assume public school in the jolly old UK. And I I, I think I, I get them mixed up, but nobody else is having your experiences. And so how does, how does that work being in, in conservative UK society? And, oh, no, I'm talking to the Pleiadians and et cetera. How does that work for a kid? Um, can I just... Can I just backtrack a little bit, Matt? Yes. Because you were, you were talking about PTSD, and I actually so so when someone has been traumatized as a child, and the, and one of the perpetrator dies, or the parents die, or one of the parents die, when there's a death, either with the parent or the perpetrator, what often happens is that the victim will 
actually get PTSD at that time. And that's what happened for me when my mum died. And I didn't know what it was because I'd never had it before and it, it wasn't familiar to me. So I went for some healing and I discovered it was PTSD that I had at the, at the time of my mum's death. And so, you know, I, I got some very good healing and, and it was uh, it was, you know, a friend helped to, to, to heal it from me. But that was very unusual for me because that was the first time I'd had it. But that is very common. Um, so I just wanted to, to to add that in. But also, you know, with the with the psychic stuff and the mediumship, we, we are actually lied to on a mass scale mm-hmm. about who we are, where we came from, why we're here. But we're also lied to on a mass scale about our own abilities mm-hmm. because everyone is born psychic. Mm-hmm. Everyone has the ability to be telepathic and to do telep- telepathy. Everyone has the ability to connect in with Pleiadian energy or other star nations or light beings, or everyone has a whole uh, uh, abundance of abilities that we are um, told through the school system that don't exist. Mm -hmm. So we are lied to on a mass scale, you know, not just about – ETs and UFOs and but also science and history and um, the universe and maths and uh, nature and energy and and a whole list of things we're lied to on a mass scale about everything mm-hmm. including our psychic abilities and what are, what okay well just uh I know that um, remote viewing is is an innate ability. Uh, that most people have it or probably everybody has it. So, and I I agree with you 100%. So why, why, why is the system set up like it is? Do you think? Because we are governed and run and ruled by, I'm I'm just going to call it as it is. I, I, you know, I don't beat around the bush. We are, we are governed and ruled and, owned as slaves, the majority of people, by negative ET energy. So the governments and the royal family Mm -hmm. are what what you would call negative um, reptilian energy. Mm. I don't know how that sits with you because I don't know... um, well, okay, I'll I'll answer that question as 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 quickly as possible, and because I can't have the king's thugs come and knock down my door, and you can't say things about the crown, you know, um, or as they said on the classic movie, The Naked Gun, even though we might find it silly to have a queen, um, what we don't have, I don't have to suffer those things. So um, it is, you know, it's the American belief system. And it was written by Thomas Paine and Common Sense that the royalty of England were the, the were the successful thugs of the Middle Ages. They were the ones who were, you know, um, for whatever reason, used deception and torture and and you know, horrible did horrible things to people to frighten them into accepting the rule. So um, uh, the you know, and people don't really understand. And I'm a history person. But the history of Europe is the history of slavery and the history of the domination of the poor by just a a few rich with weapons and are the castles. Those are monuments to torture and um, fear. And, you know, so um, when you say that that's negative energy, well, yeah, I I would tend to agree with that. And I I do think that um, anyway, I'm not going to go into it too far, but. This question is something that you and I could sit and talk about for a long time, and maybe at some point in the future we can, but I want to ask you, so you have an idea of the, you know, the, the reptilian presence. Is that David Icky or is that your psychic ability? I don't know if I say David's right name, right? No, it's David Ike. Ike. Okay. Um, Sorry, what what was the question? Uh, is it is that you? Is that your psychic ability telling you that you know the reptilians are here, or is this? Where does that come to you? Where does that come that, from? That is that is from um, channeled information from mm-hmm. the Pleiadians. Okay. So 
uh, because I, I connected to the plea agents as a child. When I was eight, I had a guy lying on top of me who who was just, I, I couldn't breathe because I was very undernourished. I had a lot of poverty, an alcoholic mom, and a lot of dysfunctional family and a lot of abuse and, and rape and trauma and all of it. And I had the... I had this guy lying on top of me when I was eight and he literally was sucking the, the breath out of me. I couldn't breathe. And I was a skinny little thing. There was no meat on me. I was undernourished to the point I was just skin and bone. And I left my body and I'd connected to the Pleiadians. Now I'd forgotten that for a number of years until I did shamanic courses in Ireland and began to have memories of, of connecting to them as a child but I'd already started to channel them in 2009. I think it was 2010. And that was one of the, that, that's some of the information that they've shared with me that they, they um, that we are ruled at, at the highest level. We are ruled by negative ET energy. And the, the, the time period we're in now is of huge significance and, and is pivotal. We're on the precipice of an awakening that has never occurred before, not in the in the way that it is happening at the moment on Earth. And it's all to do with the contract that was um, made between negative and positive ET races. And that time period is coming to an end now, which is why we are seeing things play out on Earth in the way they are, because... The, the negative, both agendas are fighting for their lives, um, both the positive and the negative. So, it, and it's also to do with ownership of the earth. There's many different aspects going on here. It's not just one thing. That There's many different aspects and there's many different levels to it as well. And there's also different dimensions. So it's, it's, it, it's, what's happening is multidimensional and, and many different levels to it, but we are run by negative ET energy is at the top of every system on earth, whether it's the school system or the, uh, the government system or the big pharma system or the military system mm -hmm. there. And that's not to say that, it, that, that there aren't good guys in those systems because there are obviously. Okay, um, you're you're probably going to go. Wait a minute. This is the first guy I've ever had that actually can talk to me about the stuff I'm talking about. All right, but before you we we get off of this, you haven't answered my question. And the first thing is, I'm real. I, it's horrible to hear that story. Um, I, I I really am really shocked, and I'm sorry to hear that. Can I just ask you on a personal level? Like, did, did you, I mean, you're obviously an attractive person. Did you like hate your looks after, I mean, did you come to resent the way that you looked after these things happened to you as a kid? And, and you know, I you did, did for a long time. I, I tried to hide my, I remember when I was around 12, I think I tried to, I started wearing baggy clothes because I wanted to hide my body so people couldn't see it. Um, and for a long time, I, I didn't like myself, you know, I, um, I've i gone through the whole drug thing and, um, um, yeah, I was, I was in pain for a long time okay. and from about 6 to 17, really, 17 until about 23, I did the whole drug scene and um, then when I was 23, I started healing and started just by accident. I was um, 
a friend said she had a headache. So I just automatically put my hands on her head and her headache went instantly. So then I started going to the spiritualist church and uh, found, I started to find kind of my inner light again. But I want to say that, that I wouldn't change my childhood if I could, because I had some, because it really opened me up to the spiritual side. So I, without the negative, I probably wouldn't, well, I wouldn't have been able to channel the Pleiadians. I wouldn't have been, uh, con- you know, connected to spirit in the way that I was. Um, that, there is a, an experience I had that I would like to share with you if it's okay. Everything's okay. Great. Thank you, Matthew. Thanks. So um, I, I've i already said about my childhood and the, and the trauma, but I got to a point where I was 12 and I just wanted out. I wanted, I was done. I didn't want to be here anymore. I didn't want to talk to anyone and I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to know anything. I So I went to my room and, and the funny thing is that I think I was around nine or 10 and spirit said to me, stop telling people what you're seeing. Stop telling people, you know, zip it, be quiet, because otherwise they will lock you up and throw away the key. Because the stuff I was seeing was just, you know, out of this world, literally. So I stopped talking about things. I didn't tell anyone, you know, around about the age of nine or 10. I think it was after my granddad um, was when I saw him. I think it was around then I stopped telling people. But this experience I had when I was 12, I was laying on my laying on my mattress in my room because that's all I had. And the layout of the room, I'll never forget it because of the experience. So I was laying on my on my mattress and I left my body. I mean, I was distraught when I left, when I was I was crying my heart out, you know, and I was I was done. I didn't want to be here. And I was deciding on taking tablets and leaving and the next thing I knew I was in the corner of my room on the right hand side above the door and looking down on my body and then I went through a tunnel of white light and Jesus came to me or I met up with Jesus and took me on a very long journey for about three or four hours and showed me many things showed me my own karma and my own soul's journey And then when he understood I got that, then he showed me the bigger picture for humanity. And I was gone for three or four hours. And when I came back, I was very blissful for about three or four weeks. I'd gone from being completely distraught and wanting to commit suicide to when I came back, I was blissful. I'd gone from one extreme to the other. And that that experience it, 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 because it was so profound it really changed my perspective and my whole understanding and I began to meditate I began to read spiritual books I didn't have any secondary education because I was stopped from the plea agent stopped me from entering the school system because they put a wall of energy in front of me whenever I would try and go into the school literally And so I would just stay home and read books and meditate and just really open up psychically. And that's how I spent my my childhood years from the age of 12 to 16. And then when I was 16, I left home and did the whole drug scene until I was around 23 and then got involved into the spiritualist church and just developed mediumship and kind of went on from there. And then I got involved in Buddhism, became a Buddhist, um, was on the on the verge of becoming a Buddhist nun, an Annie. And uh, I didn't do that. I went to Nepal and, and worked in a soup kitchen in Nepal and then became a, shame, um, a shamanic practitioner. And um, so I've kind of done the whole route, you know. Wow. That is OK. Now we don't have all day, so I've be, I better start asking you questions about your books. Now I have to point out to people that this book here, if we were to talk about it, your book, I know I can't even say the name because it will get pulled off of YouTube. So, um, but actually, so we have a book called about the Pleiadians, and then we also have a book about the 
uh, Gates, the Gates virus or, or whatever. But um, anyway, uh, unfortunately, um, I'm going to put it up there. I just want to ask you this. Is the information in the book about the Gates thing, is, is that from the, the, the Pleiadians? This is all revelation? Okay. Yeah, every, okay. Everything I do is channeled. And okay. I, I don't, um, I d- purposely don't read other channeled information because mm-hmm. I don't want to be influenced by any other channelers or information out there. Okay. In the book, do you tell people who's in, in control of this? Do I tell people who's in control? In control of the, uh, of what's happening to people, of who's controlling this, of, you know, d- do you talk about that? Well, at the highest level, it is negative ET energy. Okay, but I mean, it's you say it's energy, but are there physical beings that are behind this? And and just say yes or no, because we can't talk about it, because this is the crazy world we live in. But um, is there a reason, is there an end result for what's going on that's, oh, been, yes. that's been planned? Yes, absolutely. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, so that book is is available. Is that that's not on Amazon, is it? It was banned on Amazon okay. straight away. How do uh, we get it? How do we get it? It's on my website. Okay. Okay, and that's the Pleiadian Child. Yes, the Pleiadianchild.com. Okay, and I'll throw a link up here when I do the editing. All right, well that's great. So let's go over to the Pleiadian Child then, which we can talk about. So. Um, I have to start off by asking, who are the Pleiadians? Um, and, and let's start there before we talk about your relationship with them. But who are they? Well, when people ask me that, I, I like to keep things simple when people haven't heard of them before, because I, I don't like to complicate things. You know, I, I just normally say that they are very similar to archangels because they are, you know, to me, they, they're, they're very angelic beings they are light light beings they are you know working in the light they are from the pleiadian star system from the pleiades star system and they are very they are very loving beings that have our best interests at heart but they're very similar to archangels okay are they humans or do, or do they inhabit physical bodies or Uh, not humans, I'm sorry, but do are, are they subject to the same physical properties that they, they can't just pop in and out like, you know, bewitched or anything, right? Well, they're in a different dimension, so so they can pop in and out. Okay. They're in between the seventh, I believe it's the seventh and the thirteenth dimension. Okay. And and how did how did they get to be Pleiadians? Through evolution through evolution so they are us in in the future okay they are us in the future oh, oh, okay but are, are they us everybody us or just the certain ones that pass the tests i would i would say certain people so so on earth we have many different cultures mm-hmm. and um many different um Races is the wrong word, but 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 different um, cultures. Mm-hmm. So and that the same is, you, you know, you know, you could apply the same um, rule for the for the universe. Mm-hmm. So the universe is teeming with life, good and bad, you know, as on earth as above. Mm-hmm. Okay, but um, so let's say this. So you're talking about the Pleiadians are on the seventh dimension. The reptilians, I mean, are they, do you have to have a certain amount of, I don't know, enlightenment? Um, I, I don't want, I mean, you have to progress. Are the, are the reptilians up at that level or do they inhabit something below them? I'm not sure what dimension the, the reptilians are at, but I, I, I wouldn't say they were anywhere near that. Okay. Um, but but it, it's to do with the love frequency. The love frequency, when you can hold that love energy in you, that is what helps us to ascend, helps us to operate on a higher frequency, a higher vibration. And that is a process mm-hmm. of part of part of our soul journey is to 
reach the light or reach the higher spheres Mm -hmm. or the the love vibration. And and so it is part of our individual and collective soul journey is to to evolve. And that's part of the love frequency. And that's very connected, actually, to what's going on on Earth at the moment, because we are in in a very real evolutionary phase. So, okay, so so what are we? I mean, when you're a child, you have a sense of right and wrong, of good and evil. That's really pretty much more, it, it's, it's pretty much innate. And based on the fact, well, you just treat other people like you'd want to be treated, right? But as you get older, then the world that you're talking about, it's justified to do wrong things to other people to get what you want, to put other people or to put yourself ahead of other people. And so is this, um, is this designed to keep us from reaching that Pleiadian level eventually? What's, what's the point of the world in which we live? And I know that's very, I have a very heavy question to ask you, but do you have an answer? I do. I do, Matt. We are, you could say that we are in the dark night of the soul where we are having to face our own demons and sometimes literally demons, but but we're having to face our own demons and our own shadow and our own negative states of being. We are having to face that in a very um, obvious way on earth at the moment. And it, it's, it's through... We have to, to to swim through the darkness in order to reach the, the, the shore and and the the new dawn. Mm-hmm. But so this is an evolutionary period that has been talked about and prophesized for many years by many great um, great people and great um, the Native Americans were one of them and and the Rainbow Prophecy. This is known as the Rainbow Prophecy that that you know we are. I think that the better answer I can give you is if I um, if, is if I just give you the information that the Pleiadians have shared with me is that we are on the precipice of a, a huge evolutionary state and, and, and evolving and moving forward. And part of that is to to let go and move forward. Or, you know, our bodies are changing our minds are changing our brains are changing our hair is changing our teeth our blood our dna our literal dna is changing we are evolving into a new human into an illumined being and and there is a war going going on between light and dark between positive and negative that has been going on since for a very long time Mm -hmm. and then there's also the aspect of because I was talking about a lot of different aspects being at play. Also, another aspect being in in play would be the contract, because there was a contract made between positive and negative ET forces, where the negative won the contract and had ownership of the Earth for a very long time. And that time period, I believe, is 26,000 years, which is coming to an end. So that is also that pulls in that aspect where, it's also to do with time periods and time cycles and and stars aligning. So there's a lot at, at play here. There's a lot at stake. So both forces are fighting for their very lives, but there is a positive outcome. I mean, we are we are in a time period that we have never had on Earth before, ever. Not in the way that we we are having it. Oh, not in the way that we are experiencing at the moment, not with the technology, not with the media, not with all the things that, that we have modern society, that we have within modern society. So we are we are in unknown territory, but it also ties into what they've shared with me, which is the reversal of Atlantis. So at the time of Atlantis, the downfall of Atlantis, a large meteor or a large object hit the earth and shook the earth off its natural axis and some people when I say that I have to be very careful because it sounds like axis you know it's my accent so some I've had comments before where Americans have said but she's saying axis 
and, and it, but it, it's actually axis, um, which sounds very similar when I say it. But the Earth was taken off its natural axis. And so there were, at the time of, of the downfall of Atlantis, there were great catastrophic events. Um, I feel like I'm going into a channeling, um, causing great catastrophic events and land masses to shift, which is also tied into Antarctica and the lands, the, the ice occurring at that time. And negative ET energy came in and overthrew the Atlanteans. And, our, and they changed our DNA. They dumbed down our DNA to sever. One of the reasons was to sever our connection to the Pleiadians and other galactic beings and other, our star brothers and sisters like Syrians and, and other um, positive ET races or star nations, which I call them. So we lost our connection to them. And so they enslaved us. And they've had control of us ever since. And we are in a time period now where that contract has ended or is ending. And that their rule of the of us as humanity and their rule of Earth is coming to an end or has come to an end. And we where we are really hearing that the the the, the rattlesnake's tail, um, because it already has ended. We are just in like kind of the, the, the whiplash. It's like the whiplash the stage that we're going through as a humanity, as a collective. We've already won. It's just that we're in this kind of limbo state where we've got whiplash um, collectively. So there is, I do see a positive outcome. I, I've, I've just, I mean... There's so much information I could share with you. I'm not really sure where to start. I know I've, I've, you know, I've already gone into some of it, but we're not even going back to a time of Atlantis. We're going beyond a time of Atlantis where we are more evolved than than we were at Atlantis, and we we are Pleiadian. We are Syrians. We chose to come here to be here at this time on Earth. And then you've also got the subject of, and of the UFOs, and um, yeah, I'll I'll just pause there because I could just go on and on. Okay, well, that's thanks for letting me jump in because um, have you ever heard of this interview they did with uh, uh, Matilda McElroy? She interviewed this alien because you're saying the same thing. Um, and what this alien said, um, and I'll just give you the quick story, Roswell, 1947, they got, you know, a, a, one of the aliens, I guess, was still alive. So the only one that it would communicate with was was one of the nurses that was on staff. So it, it told her that 26,000 years ago, the old empire, um, th- there's there's the dominion, which are the people now. And they supplanted the old empire, right? And the Dominion um, are like the eat are like like she's part of the Dominion, and they supplanted the old empire twenty six thousand years ago. And um, the whole idea is when you die, I mean, you you come here to Earth, and 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 this is according to this thing. Okay, this is the Matilda McElroy interview on YouTube. It's like hours and hours long. All these different things that they talk about but she takes um she takes the nurse through like history and and whatever and supposedly they're there they take these the the information that the uh, that we give to the et they digest it they read it um and um they tell them well no this is this is the real history and um but it's all based on uh 26 000 years ago uh they they throughout the old empire their dominion they're the dominion and the old empire will eventually is trying to come back but the whole idea now is they just throw souls on and this is just according to this thing it's not my personal belief system or anything but what i do on my encounters usa show is i like to compare the similarities between different accounts and try to you know find a common ground so you're talking about the same time frame. You're talking about a different group of um, entities, and they're also part of a conglomeration of different species. So 
I would highly recommend you you watch that. And um, I'm an author myself, so I've written a book called Deceptions of the Ages, which when you talk about good and evil, well, um, that's that's basically the entire premise behind the book. But um, you're, you know, you're not preaching to the choir. I mean, you are preaching to the choir on pretty much everything you said, because um, as you dig, these are the same things that you come up with. So are you, are you, a, are you a Plidian? I mean, in one way or another, physically, spiritually, are you a Plidian? Oh, I would, I would, I mean, I don't like using labels, but I would say that I'm a Pleiadian hybrid, hybrid. Okay. And I have um, rhesus negative blood type, which is very, which is a very common um, symptom of being, of having Pleiadian kind of genetics, if, if you want to say it that way. Um, one thing I want to stress, Matt, is that I don't read other um, channelers' information because, you know, when I first started, especially when I first started to, to channel, I mean, sometimes I do lapse a little bit now, but for the majority, I, I, I don't I don't want to read others, you know, yeah. channeling or, or watch their videos because I want to to be as pure as I as pure as channel as I can be. And I've heard other channels say that as well, like Cry On and 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 Wendy Harris as well, and other channelers. So I really don't watch other um uh, other channelers or read their their information. Mm -hmm. Although I have started to watch Cry On recently, and, and he's very good. Hello, everybody. Matthew Hines here for Books in Hindsight and Encounters USA. If you want to get some great apparel, just go to EncountersUSA.com or BooksInHindsight.com where you will get great apparel as well as books by Matthew Hines. Now, let's get back to our interview with Soma. Ara. Really good to finish, but the... Um, According to this ET, and, and they're not channeling, she's sitting there talking to the thing, and they've taught it English, so they're they're talking American English, let remind you. Um, anyway, um, so they're talking to this thing, and it says that the when you die, um, your your spirit leaves your body, and then it's just shocked, they just shock the heck out of it until it forgets everything, and then they put you back. They just send you back to another body. And so it's just this constant, you know, what the Hindus would call reincarnation, but you just never get a leave, right? So here's a, here's a question. You said you talked to Jesus. Did he mention, I mean, did he mention anything about how you get to heaven, about how you leave this life, about you know, did did he recommend any religions or or anything? Um. He well, I was gone through it for hours, so he he must have said a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm planning at some point to have regression done where I actually get that 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 out of body experience recorded with a, with a um, hypnotherapist or a regressionist. Mm -hmm. Um, so that I have it on tape or video, word for word, what he said. Mm -hmm. But I haven't done that yet. But if you know anyone, I'm, I'm very interested in having that done. Um, it, it's it's to do with the with, it, it very much to do with the soul journey and our soul contract and the love frequency is how we maneuver forward. Is how we grow and evolve on a on a soul level. So we all come from different places and within the universe, um, which is why some of us are Syrian or Pleiadian. And we've all had all of those experiences. So we are all Syrian in that, in that aspect, and we are all Pleiadian in that aspect. But not and so, so and, and sometimes we may have even been Anunnaki. You know, we've all been everything. Mm -hmm. on earth you know being the victim and the perpetrator and everything in between 
and also within the universe. So we've been Pleiadian, we've been Anunnaki, we've been Syrian, we've been, you know, I mean, there's hundreds of different races on, a, on you know, mm-hmm. within the universe. So we've all been everything. And I, I don't, I'm not sure if that answers your question. Well, my question really is because we talked about the negative energy and the, and, you know, the Christians have an idea of heaven, there's nirvana, um, but how, I mean, it just seems like everything is set up to keep us away. And you started from the very beginning um, talking about the negative energy. So are you going to help people to get, to, to find a way past that? It, it, it comes really does come down to the nuts and bolts of the love frequency. Mm-hmm. That's a game changer because if you can raise your frequency, stay in that love vibration. And, and did you know that the love frequency, love vibration is actually measurable? And if it's measurable, you can create it mm-hmm. because anything that you can measure, you can create within you. And that is, I mean, it's not, this is not woo woo stuff. This comes down to science and chemicals and frequencies and energy and how we move forward and how we evolve and how we come away from negative energy and how we come away from warring with each other. And, and because they are our brothers and sisters, we are each other. So are so yeah. Ara, are you, so if I'm, if I'm a religious person, like Christian, Muslim, Hindu, um, is what you're saying, is that going to c- conflict with, with my belief system? No, not at all, because Mm -hmm. all roads lead to the same path. They all lead to the same source. Mm -hmm. There's many different religions. There's many different beliefs. There's many different writings. There's many different words used to describe the same thing within those different religions, within those different languages, within those different beliefs. There's many different words to describe the same thing. But all, all, you know... All religions, we all bleed the same blood. We all bleed the same color. We all bleed red. So it's it's all, you know, we all... If you've got two warring parties or two warring countries and the soldiers, when they go home, and they take off their uniform, and they sit with their wives and their children. They're both having the same emotions. They're both feeling the same thing, you know, the the same experiences, mirroring back at each other. And part of the the war, um, not mentality is the wrong word, but part of the warring system is set up to by... by, um, by the powers that be to keep us warring with each other, to keep us um, divided, divide and conquer is, is, is big at the moment. That's what they're using. That's one of the, the systems or the programs that they're using at the moment is divide and conquer. Black against white, young against old, rich against poor, brother against brother sometimes. Um, you know, and, and even families are, are warring with each other at the moment. Um, and what, that, that divide, is, it seems to be growing more and more and more. And, and that's one of the negative agendas kind of um, plays that they're using is to divide us. Mm-hmm. But we all, there's a very good meme um, going around a few months ago on the internet, on Facebook, where you had this image of different Labrador dogs different colored Labrador dogs. So some were a light color, some were a dark color, some were black. But but that could be used to describe us. You know, we have different religions, we have different color um, humans, but we are all the same. We are all part of source. We are all part of God, whatever you want to call it. It's the same thing. It's the same substance. Mm-hmm. And yes, we have different religions, but we are very much like a like a tree where we have different branches and different beliefs, but it all comes back to the same thing. So it really doesn't matter. 
And religion, I, I believe that religion was set up to divide us. Mm-hmm. Countries were set up to divide us, as was languages set up to divide us. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I really, I, I agree uh, 100% with what you're saying. And I think one of the litmus tests, having been, you know, around all different religions is, um, I mean, you keep talking about love is is this higher element that, you know, seems to transverse everything. But there are religions that don't, you know, preach love uh, from certain elements of Christianity to, you know, other things and uh, other other religions. And, um, you know, you're only, you only love the people who are like you, but you don't love anybody else. And so, so I, I tend to agree with you. And I think that a true religion would be one that said, you love the people who are the most different from you, because those are the people that are most lovable, and those are the people you can most learn from. So anyway, that's just a, that's just a personal observation of mine, but I think that you are right. So I, I, don't, I know we don't have forever to talk, but let's talk about um, the Pleiadian child. So can you, you're on here because you had an alien abduction experience. Is that correct? I had several actually. So um, can you, can you yeah. talk about just one? And, and I want to know, is, is this in the book? Or are we going to see this in the book? This is, this is in my book. Yes. The, okay. um, the Asian child. And yeah, that can one. You, I don't know if you can see. So, so can you talk about your abduction? Sure, Matt. Can I can I just quickly add that forgiveness is really kind of a stepping stone towards holding that or having that love frequency within ourselves. So, forgiveness for trauma, forgiveness for any type of abuse, or forgiveness of family members will help. To, it will free you from negative emotions, negative mind states of being. So forgiveness is really key. Whatever religion you are, it doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Um, and that helps to to lighten people's energy and helps to bring in the love frequency. Um, with my book, um, yes, and the, the, the abduction experience, because I am a, a UFO abductee, contactee and experiencer. Um, and I have been probably since a child and, and even before that, going back into past lives, um, because I'm actually from the Pleiades or, or, or um, my my closest memories, my closest connection would be to the Pleiades, Pleiadians. But I have other um, connections like we all do as well. But the with the UFO, with the grey experience, actually, I was I just moved to Galway. I think it was in 2009. Well, it was 2009, and I was taken on board ship. Do you want me to go in detail? Yes. Uh, um, okay. I don't I don't want you to give your book away because I want people to, to be interested in, in the book. But, um, yes, I want to hear as much as you want to tell me. Okay, great. Well, this is, this is just one experience in the book. Um, so I was in Galway. I was... Um, it was. I think it was around seven or eight in the evening, and I could hear this whirring or whirling sound, and I didn't pay much attention to it. Um, and that evening, I had this experience where I was taken on board a craft, and there were two greys. There were two greys on my. I think I'm trying to recall my memory. I think it was on my left hand side. There were two greys. And on my right, there was one grey. And I was on this kind of a slab of a table that was cold and hard. It was very cold. And I think I was, I'm I'm pretty sure I was naked. And I could hear other people screaming in agony. And it was very, there was a lot of lights around. It was very bright, um, very cold environment. When I say cold, I mean emotionless, lack of emotion. Um, but I could hear other people screaming. I, 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 
one woman in particular really always stands out to me. I can still hear her as I'm talking about it. Um, and I was on this table and the, the two greys on my left w- looked at each other. And, and then the one on this side, um, on my right hand side, they, they were talking to each other and they were saying this, this one's different, meaning me. And I didn't understand what they meant at the time, not until I started to consciously channel the Pleiadians. And they were going to do experiments on me or they were in the midst of experiments on me. And then they were saying this one's different and they were speaking telepathically. And I didn't understand at the time why they were saying this one's different. So I'm not sure how, um, what stage they were in process of with doing the experiments on me. But I found it extra. I couldn't get back into my body. And I'd been leaving my body for years and years since I was a child. So I knew how to leave my body and get back in. But this, I couldn't do it. I couldn't get back into my body. So it was like there was a wall of energy that was stopping me getting back back into my body I'm not sure but that was that was actually more scary to me I found that scarier than the actual uh, medical examinations they were doing or the implants or whatever they were doing um and I won't give it all away but but and then in the morning I was back in my body but I I couldn't get back in and um it was it wasn't a positive experience but I I came away with a feeling that they weren't positive or negative, probably veering on and more on the negative, but they were just, it was like they were being ordered to, it was like they were, were soldiers in a sense where they were had orders to, to, to do things. And, and that's, that's the, all their intention was, that they weren't kind of, they were kind of emotionless. They were, I would say numb, emotionally numb. Where they didn't they didn't care about the emotions or the pain that they were causing humans. They had a job to do, and and they were like soldiers in a sense, where they were just doing following orders. Or scientists, kind of in a way, yeah. Mm-hmm. A lack of they had a lack of of empathy towards our pain that they were inflicting upon us. Mm-hmm. But there was a lot of people on board ship. There was a lot of people there. I would say, I don't know, maybe 30, 40, 70 or 80 people. And I wasn't alone on on that ship. Okay. So you were out of your body. Could you, were you able to look around and see things and see the other people? No, I could, because I was laying down, I could only see, um, from my vantage point, I could only see the the two on my left and the one okay. on my right. But the and, and the lighting, I could see the lighting, and I had the sense of um, instruments and machinery, um, medical things going on. Mm-hmm. I remember some type of lamp with a long thin, um, a long thin attached to a long thin kind of metal thing um mm-hmm. like you would have in an operating um theater but so, so it was kind of set up like an operating okay so was that that wasn't your first abduction that was my first one that i remember okay but you, they said that you were different and so they came back for you after they knew you were different yeah i, I believe so i i I have a lot of blocked memories from a childhood, but I, and then I, my memory has been, um, I go blank sometimes my memory. So the, I've had implants and things like that um, and, and things down to my memory. And sometimes I wake up with little scars actually, um, especially around my forehead. And I have them on my wrist as well, little markings mm-hmm. and uh, lots of things going on. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. So that covers, I don't want to go too far into the the book because I want to leave it open, but it is going to be available. The links will be available in the description and your other book about the thing we can't talk about. And, and you know, the more you, you sit there and talk about 
how these things are unfeeling and unaffected by the pain they cause. I'm just thinking, boy, are these guys Democrats or what? So anyway, that, that, that's probably a side. But um, all right. So you are um, you're a psychic. And it, what like do you, you do psychic readings? Is, is that what you're doing? Is that your profession? Yes, I, I work as a psychic medium and also a, a Pleiadian channel. So I write and I teach and I give readings. I do workshops. I do talks. I do lectures. You know, Ama- you're amazing. I saw all of your stuff and I'm just going, oh my, my gosh! I hit the jackpot here. So yeah, that's great. Um, and um, are you a are are, are you are you a replacement for religion? Do you find that? Do you find that's what people look at in you? I think religion is a false. System. Do you en- do you encourage that? Do you encourage that line of thinking? I think we need to love each other. I don't think religion teaches that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think I think religion in, in, throughout history and religion, we've been conditioned and dumbed down and taught to believe that the guy over there in that country is our enemy because he he looks different or he's wearing different clothes or he's or he a, different a different religion. Religion. He's a different religion. He's a different religion. Yeah. yeah. And we're, we're taught and conditioned to be at war with each other. That's not a natural human state of being. Yeah, well, but, and we we we're coming away from that, which is, I mean, all the aspects are tied in to what's happening on Earth now. This is a great awakening where we are coming away from warring at each other, whatever religion we are. Mm-hmm. We are all, you know, we're all the same substance. Mm-hmm. You know, we're all the same. We all bleed the same. Whatever cover we're wearing, whether we're wearing a Catholic cover or a or a Protestant cover, or or even a Muslim cover, or cover, or you know, a Mormon cover, or a Buddhist cover, or a Hindu, whatever. It's all we're all the same. We're all made up of the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Yep, I agree. So Soma Ara, I'm really I don't I, I'm not even paying attention to the time, and I, I cannot see my clock, but I will bet that we are a about into an hour or so. So I want to um, just ask you a a couple of final questions. So if I want to, do you do readings for people? Do you do them like, do you have to do them in person or do you do them via the internet or how does that work? Well, I was given some upgrades and downloads last year um, and this year. So I've kind of worked, I kind of have been upgraded in the way that I work because normally when I channel the Pleiadians, so I do different readings. I do psychic readings, mediumship. I do a lot of different things. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you want to check that out, there's, there's my website, which is the Pleiadianchild.com. But basically I do different readings, like three or four different kinds of readings. So I do the psychic readings. I do the mediumship. I also do the the, the upgrades I were give, I was given last year, or this, when was it? Um, it was last year. I was doing a live interview, and normally when I channel the Pleiadians, they're next to me. But in this in this live interview, they told me to close my eyes, so I did. And they actually stepped into me and used my voice, hmm. which is called direct voice channeling. So I now do that, and I also do it within the reading. So I'm now able to give people direct messages individually in a reading through using um through using direct voice channeling for individual people which is is just beautiful to be able to do and yeah so i do different readings and mediumship and and psychic readings and channeling and do you travel outside the uk not at the moment (laughs) well you know, I'm going to tell you right now, I think when people see you on here, you're going to have a lot of uh, what you would call blokes trying to get you to do your own Brexit and come over here to the U.S. So so there's that. I, I don't know if that's even funny to you or, or not, but I no, spent, a lot, 
I'm very open to that, Matt. I'm very, very open to that. Either there's, um, I'm very open to that. Yeah. I mean, I won't go into it because we'll push the time, but. Okay. Well, we're not really pressed for time, but there you hear it. So if you want to have Soma or Ra come over to the um, U.S. And, you know, this is our first time. So I'm sure there's a way that it can it can be arranged. It's just that I, I, I deal in different circles, whatever, but probably we can find uh, some way to get you over here. So, so anyway, I just wanted to throw in that Brexit one. So I'm going to tell you this, that I had an experience um, and it was a negative one with a psychic once. And I went um, to them and um, I, you know, they, they did the reading, but in the reading, they said they were going to do all these horrible things to me. And they were going to chop me up and they were going to put me in a bag and throw me in the sea. And so I checked the person's card. It turns out I hadn't gone to a psychic. I'd gone to a psycho. So <laughs> you have to, you have to be careful. So I wasn't expecting and, that. Well, okay. Well, you, you're, you're going to understand after a while you're going to go, Oh, here's another one coming. So, <laughs> all right. So, well, so Mara, um, can before we go, can you give us a little background? I don't think you were born with that name. Does it have any significant meaning? Yes, uh, it does. Um, I, I've been asking for, for since 2009 for a spiritual name, and I was given it last year. And Soma is a, a sacred Indian elixir or drink, a sacred elixir. And a ra is to arise to rise up mm -hmm. so you're a rising up potion something right. like that yeah which seems to be very um very connected to the time we're in now because i think that's what we're doing on the collective level is we're rising up and bringing our our energy to the forefront our mm -hmm. higher energy to the forefront yeah yeah. Okay. Well, I think, um, do you have any, uh, you know, and my, I'm really tempted to just sit here and ask you all these questions, but people probably are going, well, how long is this thing going to last? And I'm sure you've got better things to do, but do you have anything else that you would like to say to our audience before you go? And remember you're talking to the books in hindsight people and the encounters USA people. Step into your heart space, step into your heart energy, step into love. Start the process of forgiveness if you haven't already for little things, but also the, the bigger horrendous things that have happened to you. Let things go. Step out of your minds and into your heart. And I think I'll just leave it there, Matt, for today. But it's I've, it's been a real pleasure to connect with you, and I would love to come back and do more and connect with you more if oh, that's possible absolutely yeah we're gonna we're gonna get you back on as soon as we can and if you'd like to see soma ara back on the podcast just go ahead and leave your comments in the description so four books in hindsight and encounters usa we'll be signing off but um we just want to remind you that well first of all we of course have to say Thank you, Soma Ara, for being on Books in Hindsight and Encounters USA. Thank you, Matt. It's been a real blessing. All right. And so with that, for you Encounters USA people, remember what we always say, always watch your back. Thanks for watching. Hey, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to another great episode of Books in Hindsight. Don't forget you can get these great Soma Ara Books and Books by Host Matthew Hines by clicking on the links in the description. Don't forget also, you can get great merchandise, see great videos, and read great blogs at Books in Hindsight as well as Hindsight.com. So remember what we always say at Books in Hindsight. That's right. Keep on reading.
This has been Books in Hindsight with your host, Matthew Hines. Please join us for our next podcast and look for our archives on iTunes and go to thehindsight.com. That's H-E-I-N-E-S site.com for great books by Matthew Hines and other great authors.